Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our MPF webinar. Today's topic, we're going to drill down on marketing, business development uh, during a pandemic. Uh, these are uncharted waters, and uh, things have changed in terms of investing time with our clients and uh, participating in conferences and things like that. Uh, we've got a really, uh, uh, I think, great faculty, uh, Lynn Tellefson. Uh, Lynn, how are you? I'm doing very well. How are you doing, John? Doing fine. And from where do you participate with us today? Coming from New Jersey. New yeah. Jersey, the Garden State. The Garden State, and it is in full bloom. It's a beautiful day, and the garden is growing. You know, New Jersey gets a bum rap because people think of uh, Newark and Elizabeth <laughs> and, uh, you know, oil refineries, and it, it's beautiful parts of New Jersey. Uh, so we're glad you're here, and thank you so much. Lynn's an in-house marketer, a hundred lawyer firm, I believe. Wilentz. That's correct. Yeah, Wilentz, uh, Wilentz, and Spitzer, a hundred years, a hundred lawyers. Yeah. Boy, you're doing a party. Well, I guess a hundred year anniversary is going to be tough to pull off this year, huh? Well, we actually had it last year, so that was very lucky. It was yes. last. Year. Last year was our hundred. We're 101 this year. Ah, <laughs> keeping you honest, Tellison. Keeping you honest. So we're, we're glad you're here. And Guy Alvarez. Uh, Guy is uh, an expert in social media, media and digital marketing. And Guy, where uh, where sit you this afternoon? Hey, John and Uri and Lynn. Nice to be with you today. Uh, so today I am actually in beautiful uh, West Hampton Beach. Um, I've been out here for about a month. I had to es escape New York City. Uh, unfortunately, though, my time is coming to an end here. I, I leave. Uh, I return on Friday. So trying to uh, going to try to enjoy the beach after this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. Are you officed in Midtown, New York, uh, right right there in Manhattan? Yeah, we're on. Uh, we're right in the uh, Gramercy Park area. So right in the middle and of it. Are you are you contemplating a back to office uh, initiative or what's what's? So we we told our employees uh, n no one is coming back until September and we'll see where we're at in September. So for us it's not a big deal. We um, we've been operating as a virtual agency. Uh, you know every, every Friday we work from home anyway. So for us it, it wasn't a huge difference. You know, we've surveyed the uh, participants at these webinars and, and remarkably, they've adjusted quite well to this. And uh, when we ask, you know, how has your firm adjusted to the changes the past few months? Better than expected, you know, 80 uh, percent. Those who had invested in cloud and virtual uh, work at home type situations really didn't miss much of a beat. Yeah. Um, and and my friend Uri Gutfreund, Uri, where are you today? I am also in the beautiful Garden State of New Jersey. I'm in the northern end of New Jersey, Bergen County, um, somewhere in between the beautiful farms of the southern New Jersey and the beautiful beaches with the uh, industrial sections uh, that you mentioned. Bergen County is beautiful, though. Thanks, John. Well, you'd think you you'd think he was in the Miss America pageant, you know, talking oh, I, about. I do love New Jersey. I do. I do love New Jersey. <laughs> From the beautiful Garden State. The beautiful uh, Garden State. I love New Jersey. I do. Well, I'm I'm sitting in my living room in Atlanta, and uh, I'm supposed to be heading down to Florida this weekend. That's home for me. And uh, New Palm Beach County, often called the sixth borough, and it. I'm, I'm, you know, we could be back on lockdown. I was hoping to get out to a restaurant, maybe enjoy the beach, but I don't know that that's going to happen. But uh, thank you all for being with us today and uh, sharing a little bit about uh, where you are and, and your backgrounds. Uh, before we get started, Guy, um, tell us about Good to Be Social and when you started the company and what, what you're all about. Sure. So um, I started Good to Be Social about eight years ago, um, we are a, a digital marketing agency that specializes in the legal industry. We work with law firms of all different types and all different sizes, from uh, many of the AMLA 100 firms uh, all the way down to solo practitioners and everything in between. And wow. basically what we help them to do is we, we help them to leverage digital technology to achieve their business objectives whether those are 
uh, generating more leads, enhancing their thought leadership position, uh, providing better service to their clients, uh, cross-selling to their clients, as well as helping them to differentiate themselves from their competitors. Interesting. Yeah, I got into law firm marketing in the 80s when it, when when my notion was yellow pages and billboards. <laughs> Remember the yellow pages? And we hadn't, we hadn't even heard of the internet. And, and boy, <laughs> things haven't yeah. changed. We're at things the top of the hour. I'm going to go ahead and uh, we'll start the formal program. We are being recorded. Everybody with us today will follow up with a link to the recorded version. We have a nice set of handout materials we'll be sending uh, it'll include survey results. We're big on the surveys, as are people who participate in these programs. So we bring it on. Uh, then we'll have some articles and such, nice set of handout materials. So thank you, everyone, for being with us today. We had about 110 people registered. Uh, and typically, about 80% or so will show up live. So we're glad you're here. Uh, marketing in a uh, coronavirus pandemic is what we're here to talk about today. Um, and uh, Uri, glad you're here. She's my partner in crime. <laughs> no crime here today, John. Delighted to be here with you again. Uh, this, as you said, has, is our eighth. It's a pleasure to do these with you. You know, you really have your pulse on uh, what managing partners need in these tough times. So you've been around forever. Sorry about that, John. You've been around forever, and I mean that in a positive way. Thank and uh, great to be here. Thanks, John. Thank you. And you've been around a long time, too. So, you know, there. you're you're not exactly the new kid on the block. <laughs> Uri and I have been friends for a while. He runs managing partner programs in New York, New Jersey. Uh, and so we're really tuned into mid-sized law firms and helping them, uh, you know, run more as businesses with plans and honing in on profitability and these sorts of things. Uh, our two... Uh, guest speakers. Um, if you joined us early, you had a chance to meet them, but uh, we'll go ahead and, and set forth a more formal introduction. And Guy Alvarez. Um, I met Guy through one of Uri's programs in New York, uh, maybe a year ago. Uh, so Guy is a recovering lawyer and uh, has worked with firms of all sizes. Quite a background here you can see uh, that Guy brings to the table. Um, am I missing anything, Guy, that uh, you'd like our uh, audience to know about you that uh, isn't on this flat on this uh, on this bio slide, or that we haven't yet talked about? Uh, well, I, I am an amateur mixologist, as Lynn knows, so I enjoy making cocktails. <laughs> I enjoy drinking cocktails. Perfect. <laughs> we'll have to get together on the beach uh, later on this summer. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to. Uh, that's good to know. And uh, as well, Lynn Tellefson, I, I set these up alphabetically. Uh, so A comes before T. And here comes Lynn's information. She's an in-house marketer. So she's there in the trenches and works with a hundred lawyer firm in New Jersey. Just celebrated its hundredth anniversary. Very active in the Legal Marketing Association. And Lynn, you own a restaurant as well, I learned during our uh, opening banter. That's correct. It's a uh, BYO Bistro Farm to Table, uh, emphasizing sustainability. And uh, we're holding steady during this. We're holding steady. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, that's got to be tough, tough slogging this time of year. And yeah. anything uh, that, that we uh, want to know about you that's not already uh, posted here or that we've talked about? No, I think we're good. It looks great. Do you serve cocktails at your restaurant? We don't. It's BYO. So um, I wish that were the case. But, um, All right, Guy, I'm coming to your place. You know, we can, <laughs> <laughs> we can do a road trip, trip. <laughs> road trip down to, down to uh, Lynn's place for food, and we'll, uh, we'll bring some stuff with us. Um, opening remarks, uh, we're going to start with some data. When you all registered, you, uh, we asked you to fill out four questions. Uh, so we're going to share with you some of that uh, survey data. Uh, and then we're going to do some live polling real quick. Uh, Guy and Lynn were very eager to put, put the audience polling technology into play. You all love the benchmarking data. So we're going to do quite a bit of polling, more than we've ever done for a webinar. Uh, we'll engage in a, uh, we'll ask Lynn to, to, to share with us her thoughts as to how to effectively market a law firm during a pandemic. 
and uh, ask Guy to pile on and share his thoughts as well, uh, honing a, a bit more into social media, digital marketing in these times. We'll engage some group discussion as time permits. Uri's got the list of questions you all typed in when you registered. And we have a chat feature here. You can type in your questions as we go. Uh, Uri, should, tell us how that works. Sure, John. So on the right side of your controls, there's actually a chat and a question section. We're gonna take questions today. So you wanna click on the question section uh, and ask us your questions. As John said, we have a whole bunch of questions that were asked uh, of our panelists and they'll be addressing them during the program when you registered, as well as as they do their presentation, please give us your questions in that questions function and we will uh, work them into our later discussion and incorporate that uh, to the best we can, of course, time permitting. So uh, that's how we're going to do it. So, um, John, why don't we kick it off with our polling? So this was when you registered. Yes. We asked how important to maintain and improve your marketing uh, is it for you at your firm? And not surprisingly, and uh, of course, we weren't surprised because you're the folks that showed up on this a great program today. 96% of you said that it is either very important or somewhat important. So you're in the right place, and uh, we're excited that Lynn and Guy are going to kick this off. John? These are 110 uh, law firms, uh, and this data is fresh. Uh, and we still had results coming in within 15 minutes of our start time. So uh, you're here because you think this is important. Uh, are you providing business development training to your lawyers? And uh, when we grouped as a panel last night, we were surprised to see uh, that 55% of folks on today's call claim to be providing training of some sort. We've asked this question over the years, about 40% uh, seem we hover around that. And uh, Lynn, I'm sure you're doing some of this stuff at your law firm, uh, training those lawyers to get out, build relationships, reputations. Yeah. Uh, as well, we asked about social media policy. You know, you got people out there on Facebook and LinkedIn and Instagram and wherever tweeting. And do you have any uh, guardrails uh, on, on their activities? And 52% of you say yes. I, I think our question would be who's watching, who's enforcing, uh, because, you know, people will say crazy things online uh, from time to time. And um, so we think it's important to have social media policies in place. Guy, I'm sure you'll talk a little bit about that. Um, you know, not only training your people, but, uh, you know, suggesting that there are appropriate things to say or not say uh, in online forums. Here's our first yeah, polling no. question. Oh, I'm sorry, Guy, you want to jump in? No. I was just going to say, uh, it, not just on how to use social media, but also why. I, I, I find that that's, that's the biggest questions that attorneys has is why should I be using social media? So we'll talk okay. about that. Absolutely. Uh, and this is our first polling question. This is more for the benefit of uh, Lynn and Guy to give them a sense of the firm sizes represented today and uh, gives you a chance to play with the technology a little bit. And uh, looks about half of you are in so far. Five, four, I love the countdown. Three, two, one. We've got about three quarters of you in on this question. I'm going to close it out and share. Great. So um, this, um, you know, you can see we got a wide array. It looks like we're a little skewed towards smaller firms today. Uh, than than most of our uh, most of our programs. We're going to go rapid fire a couple of polling questions here for you. Uh, and Lynn was interested in this question, so we'll toss it out there. And that is: uh, Does your firm have an in-house marketing person, or do you tend to outsource? The, the marketing activities to a PR firm, or maybe there's a blended approach. How you how you accomplishing the marketing at your law firm? And we've got about half of you in. Lynn, I'm going to ask you to predict, given our firm sizes, uh, what we got here. 
I'm going to say more than half have someone in house, at least one person in house. I'm going to go with uh, 60%. Boy, you you should be on a game show. Uh, <laughs> spot, on. <laughs> spot on. Spot um, on. Uh, we, we thought there's 7%. No, we don't market our law firm. Uh, well, you're marketing in one way or another. Uh, every phone call, every handshake, every telephone conversation is a marketing and business development opportunity, uh, whether you whether you whether you kind of think of it that way or not, and it leaves a positive or a neutral or a negative impression. Here's another one that Lynn and I think this is a really interesting question too, and that's the degree to which uh, your marketer. Uh, plays a meaningful role on the leadership team uh, and helping your firm with its strategic initiatives, uh, maybe uh, maintaining that firm culture that attracts and retains your talent. So um, does your firm's top marketing person, are they, do they have a seat at that table? Are they really leading change within their law firms? And Lynn, I'm going to put you on the spot again. Mm, and uh, say, what do you think our crowd's going to say? Um, I'm going to say 25% will do. Completely immersed you know, 25%, Lynn? Lynn? Are, you, wow. are you seeing these answers? <laughs> are you, you're cheating. You've got to be cheating. <laughs> I mean, spot on. You should be on prices right. I've been doing uh, this too long. I've been doing this 21 years. 25% on the nose. Um, I would think all of us on this call think that marketers should have a seat at the table, should be involved in, in moving the needle and impacting change and uh, affecting strategy in a big, big way. So, um, Uri, are we back alive? Because I can't see what you see as the organizer. Are we back where we need to be? Exactly. Beautiful. With that, and thank you everyone for uh, participating in these uh, live polling questions, let's turn to Lynn Tellefson. As Guy said yesterday, ladies before gentlemen, and uh, <laughs> I use you. the term gentlemen loosely. Uh, so, so Lynn, let's, let's come to you and uh, have you set, set us off uh, with a few comments, what you think firms this size should be doing. You got it. Thanks, John. Um, I thank know you. Yeah, it's a big topic and we have a lot to talk about, so I will uh, just jump right in. I think there's two main areas of focus um, you know, during the pandemic in terms of marketing. And one is the lawyers being focused on client outreach. And the other is the marketing team being focused on supporting those efforts and also being focused on the communications and campaigns that will help to raise the firm's profile in the right way. Um, at Will Lens, we created a legal response team and a, uh, a resource center uh, to keep our clients connected to us and connected to our latest thinking. And I guess uh, we probably have close to 100 publications in it uh, at this time. It includes uh, links to resources and it includes um, uh, helpful high value content that I know Guy is going to talk about later. Uh, like checklists that are helping clients to adapt and evolve. But if you have to boil it down to one question, it would be, how may I be of service? Because you want to be in those conversations with your client and you want your client to know that you understand what they are facing and when they're facing what they're facing and help to connect them to the resources and the thinking that they need not just to withstand the crisis, but to adapt and to evolve. Um, so that those are the, the the aspects I think are most important, and I'll I'll share just briefly that um, some some firms I've heard have either suggested to clients that they themselves form their own resource teams, their own task forces in house, or if they already have them to join them. So I thought that was also uh, interesting. Lynn. What, yeah. Lynn, I, this is a great place to start. One of the questions that we get often on this topic, if you just go back to that last slide, John, that when how can I be of service? And it seems like there's a thin line between marketing your firm in a uncouth way and a sincerity of how can I be of service? And it, it's almost like 
you know, walking that fine line. How have you handled that? And how would you recommend the firms handle that at their firms? Yeah, sure. I mean, uh, when you're in the conversation, I think it's a natural flow. So when you're, you know, you're talking to clients, they're all different matters and things that you've been working on. You have some knowledge. So you're checking in with them on a one-on-one -on -one basis in whatever way is natural and makes sense to you. So if you see something cross the transom on the regulatory side and you know that it's going to affect your client in a certain way, you might reach out very specifically and say, uh, hey, John, I understand that you may have these uh, you know, issues in your contracts. Why don't you send them over to me and I'll take a look at them and we'll make sure everything is, is copacetic. So I think it's a natural flow. I don't have a uh, you know, universal answer to that except to say um, it, it, you, want it, you want to do it in a one-on-one -on -one way and you want to do mm -hmm. it in a specific way. And sometimes it's just connecting folks with the resources that they need. Got it. Thank you. Sure. Marie, stop interrupting the speaker. <laughs> we'll, we'll move along. <laughs> <laughs> I've been try, trying to get our panel. We got a lot to cover. We got to move. We got to move. And so who's the first rule violator? My co <laughs> So let's move what on. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? <laughs> yeah, so, so, and folks, you know, everyone's online now. We, we're in a virtual world at this point. Um, thinking about relationships, obviously clients are, are, are the primary focus, but we also have colleagues and alumni and former clients and law school buddies. And I know the bar associations aren't holding uh, the meetings in person. They might be virtually done or rescheduled, but they're still providing services to their members and there's still ways that you can get involved and be participating. So, um, uh, anyway, this is just when we think about our networks, let's think really broadly if we can. So I want right. to talk about a couple of um, do's and don'ts. We'll just, yeah, yep. So one of the things, you know, do's and don'ts, you want to activate your marketing resources. If you've got them, use them. And it's been a really busy time for uh, my team and for me, uh, probably busier than any other time I can remember. And you want to organize yourselves internally and have a plan and have an approach. We talked about working one-on-one -on -one with clients. Participation in social networking. Um, everyone's online. And I'm going to talk in a minute a little bit more about LinkedIn. Um, but LinkedIn has seen a huge surge. You might want to present and do webinars or develop content like checklists and other high-value content that clients and others might find useful and help clients to find their, their silver lining. So uh, you have a different perspective, a commercial perspective, and um, you know, we talk a lot about issues and problems and disputes. It's, uh, there are some positives too. If there are positives, see if you can find them. And then show that you care. I think um, you know, when this is over, folks aren't gonna remember just what you said, but how you made them feel. So um, the most fun part of the remarks I'm gonna make today are about uh, fun ways that you can engage folks in this virtual world. I'm going to share some of the ideas I've heard from the legal marketing community um, with you guys. And the don'ts, I mean, don't neglect marketing. This is a time you want to market. Obviously, 96% of the folks said that originally. Don't wait for things to return to normal. You know, don't push an, a, an agenda. Don't neglect the referral sources because those are the folks who are going to help introduce you to new people during this time in this virtual world. And don't be too inwardly uh, focused. Again, it comes down to how can I be of service? So there's just some do's and don'ts. Can I add, don't sell? Would, would you agree with that, Lynn? Now is yeah, not the would, time to yes. sell? Yes, I think almost everyone is focused on the effects and planning, adapting, and evolving. Uh, we're in different phases of that. I think it's a very hyper local marketplace. Obviously, different industry sectors are are uh, affected in very different ways. But yes, I think that the world is focused on uh, withstanding this crisis and on uh, adapting and evolving. So I agree. Um, so social networks, that's the marketing silver lining. There's been a surge in uh, use of LinkedIn, almost 30%. Uh, I know on our company page for, for my firm, we've seen an increase of about 50, 60%, something like that. Oh, wow. 
Yeah, achieve. on the organic side. So that was really big. Uh, 169 million users in the U.S., 690 million users uh, worldwide, representing 50 million companies. That's a lot. So, and we actually have an uh, initiative internally. I have someone on my team. It's a short-term uh, project. It's not probably going to, maybe it will go on forever, but working one-on-one -on -one with lawyers to enhance their profiles and to understand how to get the most of their time on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. So we're doing that on a one-by-one on -one basis. Um, when so, we chatted yesterday as a group, you know, a little dress rehearsal, I said Twitter, Facebook, and Guy, you were real quick to say, no, LinkedIn. We'll talk about that. <laughs> I don't uh, want to take from Lynn's time. You know, I've always, <laughs> I've always said LinkedIn is for, for business and Facebook's for friends and family. That, that's kind of what I've been saying. All right, so the fun part, I'm going to end with, with what I think is the most fun is how, you know, we get asked that question a lot. How do we bring people together and how do we virtually network? So I've, um, I've heard of some really interesting creative ideas. Uh, some of them involve alcohol, whiskey tasting, yeah. beer tastings, wine tastings. There was a firm I um, told that brought in a consultant, a guest speaker to talk about happiness. Um, I've heard of yoga sessions, Peloton sessions, meditation, um, an animal sanctuary tour, a museum tour. I haven't heard of any virtual reality um, sort of let's take a trip uh, experiences, but I wouldn't be surprised if, if those were next. But um, there is an article that details what some firms have done. I, John has that article and he'll provide that to everyone in the handout materials, but it's a fun little uh, fun read, a couple minute read of the uh, of the some of the things that law firms have done that I thought were really interesting that might be good food for thought. And of course, if there are other, if you have questions that I could be of service to you, please connect with me on LinkedIn and I'd be happy to put you in touch with uh, any resources you might need or answer any questions you have. So thank you, Dr. Lynn, uh, thank you. And and I, I love this quote from, from Teddy Roosevelt, uh, show you care, demonstrate that you really care through deeds and actions, pick up the phone, how you doing, how can we help really be authentic? I think that's important. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you. Um, as we segue over to Mr. Alvarez, uh, let's go back to some polling questions and uh, pull those up. And Guy, these are questions you had provided us. And yep. this first one is digital marketing strategies, tactics that your firm uses. And this is a check all that apply. So you can check all, check none, check three, whatever you want. Uh, but here are the options we're going to give you. And um, as our votes come in, uh, Guy, I'm going to put you on the hot seat and oh. ask what you think will be our number one <sighs> digital marketing tactic that the firms on this call use. I'm going to say either social media or newsletters and alerts. That's going to be the the two with webinars closely behind. Both of you guys are cheating. <laughs> no, I mean, that's just, there we go. <laughs> How are you getting these answers before we do the reveal? <laughs> uh, social media, sure enough, that's kind of a catch-all, uh, I would think. Um, and, and yeah, there's those e-newsletters and, uh, and the webinars. So uh, that's what firms are using. Uh, paper John, clip, have, not uh, so much. We have good uh, good panelists, that's why, that's all. <laughs> they have their finger on the pulse. And one exactly. more question, Guy, before we turn you loose, and that is going to be your firm's biggest marketing challenge. Here you're going to just pick one answer, and here are the options we're going to present to you. What's your biggest challenge uh, as you try to market your law firm, its lawyers? <clears throat> Guy, get ready. Prediction time. Uh, I, I'm about... going gonna, gonna to say what I always hear, but I think it's false. But in any case, uh, I always hear lack of time. Mm. Uh, let's see if that's if I'm right or not. 
Jeez Louise, you guys are like a hundred percent. This question is self answered, right? I think, guy, that's your point. This is what people say is the problem. Yeah. But it's like people are uh, trying to lose weight when they say, oh, I don't have time to go to the gym or uh, I don't have time to brush my teeth at night. You know, you don't, if you want to have clean teeth or if you want to lose weight, you, you got to make time for it. So, uh, if you want to grow your your practice, if you want to generate new business, you got to make time for it. So that, priorities. That's that's priority. Correct. I think there's a lot of avoidance, to be honest with you. I used to say that the billable mm -hmm. hour was my biggest obstacle. Well, it's the same thing, right? Lack of time, market, billable yeah. hour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Too busy, don't you know? Too busy. <laughs> I've got 1,400 hours I'm billing this year, John. <laughs> so uh, off you go, Mr. Alvarez. The stage is yours. So, you know, a, a couple of things that I think are uh, do's and don'ts uh, during this time. Um, and, you know, the first one was already referred to by Lynn and, and, and you, John, you know, the focus should be on helping, not selling. And, and I would say uh, you never sell during an epidemic mm -hmm. or at any point in time. If, if you're coming across a salesy, um, you know, and sale, sales is a, is a dirty word in the legal industry. So uh, but it, it really is about help. Uh, you know, how can you help? Uh, how may I be of service, as Lynn put it? Um, and be genuine. Um, and it may not have to do anything with what you do as a lawyer. Uh, you might be able to help by providing access to someone in your network. You might be able to help by recommending uh, a specific strategy that has nothing to do with your practice. But uh, as Lynn said, people remember how you make them feel, especially during this time. So 100% uh, agree on that. Um, focus on the low hanging fruit. This is really the time to sort of narrow down your marketing initiatives and focus on uh, clients or industries or practice areas where you know there's a big opportunity right now, but also where you know there's a huge need. So rather than go very broad and focus on branding and you know uh, raising uh, awareness of the overall firm, focus on those opportunities that you think uh, will bear uh, the best uh, fruit at this particular time. Um, Invest in training your team. Um, you know, one of the things we were talking about yesterday is that a lot of people at law firms, a lot of marketing people at law firms, don't necessarily uh, are not necessarily aware of all the latest uh, digital strategies and digital technologies. And because the world is shifting to digital, especially now, you know, invest in training your team, getting them up to speed, teaching them how to use the technologies, how to measure uh, what you're doing that becomes really important, as well as leverage some technologies that help you to automate the routine uh, so that your team and yourself can focus on more of the strategic stuff. Um, so there's a lot of great technology out there um, and it, it takes, you know, it, it takes care of the routine uh, grinding stuff of work that, that you really don't need to be doing necessarily. Um, and then lastly, think narrow, not broad. Again, really, really target what your marketing is going to be, who you're going to market to. Um, maybe select, uh, uh, if, you, if you have a, a, a corporate practice, focus on your top opportunities, top companies, uh, top accounts, and develop a plan for them. Um, or if you're more in the B2C world, you know, focus on a specific area of the law that you do that you think is right for opportunities. Um, don't try to go to broad right now. Um, guy, I, guy, a question, a couple of questions came in before the event and even during sure. the event, we had the same kind of question and you hinted yeah. at it, but I just want you to clarify one thing, which mm -hmm. is most of the firms on this call are not boutique in one practice area. Yeah. So what I think I'm hearing you say, and maybe you can clarify, which is sometimes a firm will have a marketing plan and for the firm who's a boutique, they can think very narrow and that's very obvious. When you have a multi-practice firm, I think you're speaking to each lawyer. Think narrow. Think about your practice and your marketing plan. Yep. Talk, speak to that. Well, th that's a great question. And a, a couple of things with that. Number one is, you know, unless you have a uh, 100, 200 person marketing department, the reality is you can't market to everyone. You don't have the resources and you're not going to be able to. So 
there has to be some tough decisions made and figure out, okay, based upon the resources that you have, what are those low hanging fruits? What are those opportunities that are real right now, right? Um, so that's number one. Number two is if you're at a firm that has multiple practice areas, mm -hmm. um, you shouldn't have a firm wide marketing strategy because it doesn't make any sense. You should have a, a, a strategy at the practice area level or at the, at the industry or sector level because your target audience is going to be different. Their interests are going to be different. Their problems are going to be different. So it's, it's, it's not a one size fits all. It's you really have to, you know, it's going back to something Lynn said, you know, you have to understand your client's business and where their opportunities and where their issues lie. And the more you understand their business, at the end of the day, clients want to work with lawyers that A, understand their business and have the experience in dealing with the issues that they're dealing with. So if you can put that together into a plan, that's what's going to be very successful. Okay. Um, so anyway, one size, uh, don't use a one size fits all approach that goes along with what I just said. And when it comes to social media, there is no such thing as set it and forget it. Same thing with mm -hmm. SEO, by the way. These are things that you have to continuously work on. Uh, if we can go to the next slide, uh, John. Sure. All right. So I did look at uh, some of the questions that came in ahead of time. Uh, and I know content was a big question. You know, what content, how frequent should it be? What kind of content should we be creating? Um, so let me try to answer that. Uh, first and foremost, your content has to be client centric. I see a lot of law firms out there. If you go to their website, it's all about them, our people, our practice areas, our awards. Clients don't care what you do. They care about what you can do for them. And so that's the way you should position your website and that's the way you should position your content. It has to be client centric. How do you create client-centric content? Ask your clients. Ask your clients, what keeps you up at night? What issues are you dealing with? What opportunities do you see in the next 60, 30, 90, 100 days, right? And formulate a content strategy around that because odds are if your clients are having those issues, then other similarly situated individuals and companies will have the same issues. So always think client-centric with your content. Make sure it provides guidance, education, value, right? Make sure it's non-promotional. You don't need to sell. You just can show your knowledge and your experience by educating people, by providing access into your networks. That's how you provide value. Make sure it's relevant and timely. Make sure it's free of jargon. You don't want to you're not writing a law review article with uh, a thousand words or 10,000 words. No one wants to read that. Uh, and most of the people you're dealing with are uh, lay people. They don't understand the legal le legalese. Or even if you're dealing with in-house counsel, again, try to make it consumable. Try and make it easy to understand, easy to get through. Use case studies. Use examples as much as possible. Storytell. And then last but not least, make sure your content is shareable. I can't tell you how many websites I look at from law firms and all of their content is in a PDF format. PDFs are not shareable. In order to share a PDF, you have to download it, then you have to upload it into your email client. You got to figure out who you want to share it with. It's just not workable. Um, one last thing, in terms of frequency, the more the merrier. Uh, I'm not saying you know spam your clients or your database every day. That's not what I'm suggesting at all. But Put up content on social media, put up content on your website as frequently as possible, and then use social media, use email when necessary to get the right content to the right people at the right time. And that is key. If you're providing content that you know is going to be of, of, of interest and of value, that's going to take you a long way. Guy, question. How do you feel about testimonials within the content? So I, I, I don't... I, I tend to view testimonials as, as promotional. Um, I think there is a place for testimonials on a website. Um, they, they do provide social proof, but that should not be the focus. That should not really be the focus of your content. I much rather see a firm invest in case studies than invest in testimonials. You know, case studies will let that client or potential client understand 
A, you know their business, you understand their business, and you have experience in dealing with the types of issues that they're dealing with. And a lot of times firms will say, well, we don't do case studies. We don't, we don't want to name names or our clients won't allow us to. You don't have to name names. You can create case studies that say this type of company or this type of individual, this was the situation, uh, this is how we approached it, and these were the results. Um, case studies, I feel, are one of the most important pieces of content you can have on a website, and most law firm websites do not have case studies. What about fictional case studies? You, you can, can make that stuff as well. up. You can make stuff up. I think it's perfectly fine if if you if you don't have a client that you've done work with that that shows your knowledge and experience in a, in a, in a particular setting. Make up a case study. If that illustrates the type of work you do, there's nothing wrong with that. And my last question is video. Video. More and more Huge. firms bringing video into their websites and such. Uh, hugely important. Uh, short, uh, short videos, uh, animated videos, uh, people videos. You're talking one minute or less. Um, it enables you to appear human. It enables you to... Uh, to communicate a, a, a uh, sophisticated or difficult concept. Uh, a lot of people don't have to read, don't have the time to read, don't wanna read. Uh, videos are 80% more engaging on social media than regular written content. And you don't have to spend a lot of money on videos. You can use your iPhone or your iPad or even you know Zoom on your own and, and record yourself and put it out there. Uh, video is becoming increasingly important. Next Excellent. Slide. Yes, sir. Um, so social media, we talked a lot about it. Um, how do you use social media? There's really four ways, uh, four business purposes of social media. Uh, number one is stay on, stay top of mind with your existing network, right? Uh, instead of spamming or emailing people, just frequently putting up content about what you're doing, what kind of work you're doing, what kind of things you're specializing in, and things that demonstrate your knowledge and experience, that helps you stay on top of mind with your existing network. And you're gonna get a lot of referrals uh, and people will be contacting you because you're staying top of mind. Second business purpose is growing strategically your network, right? Figuring out who you wanna connect with, what are the types of people that can generate business for you, whether they're clients or referral sources. Number three, use social media to demonstrate your knowledge and your experience, uh, and don't do it in a salesy way. Just you know, mm. think about when you were in law school. One of the first things they teach you is they give you a fact pattern and they ask you to like, spot the issues. Spot the issues today. If there's a new regulation, a new law, a new court decision, write about what it might mean to someone. You don't have to come out on one side or the other, just spot the issues. And then last but not least, use social media to provide added value to your existing clients. Content is a great way to provide it, it's just added value. And, and I speak to a lot of clients, they are looking for that value add. And so you can do that through content. Okay. Last but not least, your website. Um, I can't tell you how many law firm websites out there that I see that are just basically brochure type websites. They're not, you know, they're, they're not focused on lead generation. They're not focused on demonstrating your firm's knowledge and experience. They're very firm and internally centric. So how do you transform your website into a lead generation platform? Uh, consider conversion rate optimization. Uh, it's the ability to actually see how people are interacting to, with your website. Uh, we have this technology available that actually records as people go into your website you can see what they're doing, where they're clicking, where they're jumping off, if they have any frustrations. So invest in this type of technology and service so that you can see what people do when they get to your website and why you may not be getting uh, new opportunities or new leads. Uh, as Lynn mentioned before, create added value content. We call those lead magnets, right? Checklists, guides, eBooks, webinars, audits, all of these things that are going to provide added value and in exchange you will get that person's the visitors uh, contact information so that then you can start to communicate with them and eventually build a relationship 
uh, test and adjust everything you do on your website, everything you do on social media, you should always be testing, right? Not every practice is the same. Not every audience is the same. Uh, so you always wanna be testing what works for your audience, what works for your firm, and adjusting your strategy. You should not have a digital strategy that you set at the beginning of the year and you're done with it. We look at strategy every quarter. We see what's working, what's not working, and we adjust accordingly. And then last but not least, uh, and I saw a couple of people said that one of their biggest marketing challenges was figuring out the ROI, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of firms yeah. are doing social media, but I ask any what managing works? partner, yeah. what are you getting out of it? They don't know. Oh, we, we got a lot of Facebook likes, or we got over a thousand Twitter followers. Who cares? That doesn't mean anything to them. So you want to measure, yes, but you want to tie it to your overall firm business objectives and try to figure out what does this mean? You know, if people are looking at a particular piece of content, should you be doing more of that type of content? Does it present new opportunities? So it's not enough to measure. You also need to figure out what the numbers, what the data means. Kai, let me just ask, just off the top of my head, you know, a, a lot of a lot of firms sending out the e-newsletters and um, um, what click-through rates, uh, open rates, what what are good numbers? Sure. So in the in the legal industry, a good number from an open rate perspective is anywhere between eighteen and twenty-five percent open rate. So okay. if your if your email open rates are somewhere between there, you're in the industry average. If you're higher than that, great. If you're lower than that, you have some work to do. Uh, in terms of click through rates, click through rates we're typically going to see somewhere between five to twelve percent click through rates in the legal industry. So there again, if you're in that range, you're doing well. If not, you got to look at a couple of things. You got to look at the email. Is the format right? Or maybe it's your offer. You know, is it good? Is it attractive? Um, and 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 if not, you know, put yourselves in the shoes of your of the person you're sending the email to, and and really be honest. Would you click through? Is it is it grabbing your attention? You know, we get thousands and thousands of emails every day, and we only click on a few of them. Think about what would make you click through to see if it's actually worthwhile. Well, to and you. I've read who it's from is important. And, and yes. what's in that subject line is really Absolutely. important. And yeah, and so when we talk about testing, you know, testing and emails is something we always do. So we mm. test out subject lines, we test out the from, we'll test out um, the, uh, the, the call to action. Uh, I'll give you an example. One of the things we used to do uh, on my company is when we sent out our, our weekly newsletter, it would just be called, you know, Good to be social, legal marketing insights, volume two, you know, and the date. And our click through rate, our open rate was pretty low. And I said, you know what? Let's take one of the subject, one of the, you know, we have like five or six blog posts per week. Let's actually use one of those to try to tease the audience about something substantive. And, and as we did that, boom, it, it exploded. So Amazing. don't just call it, you know, ABC Law Firm June 20th newsletter. Uh, you know, uh, try to put some substance, think about what's going to make you open something and think if your visitors would do the same. You know, I've been reading, you know, top 10, top 10 way, you know, the top five, top. Yep. It's a real hook. Listicles are great. Uh, Listicles are great. Uh, two reasons. Uh, if you say top 10, top five, you know, you're not going to be reading something for a very long time. You're going to get five mm -hmm. quick things that you can learn. Uh, and you'll go from there. So those types of subject lines are, work really well on email and in social media. Beautiful. And Guy, you wanted to talk a little bit about uh, a webinar you're presenting. So uh, no, this is a webinar. We, they can... Yeah, we, we did this webinar, I think it was about uh, three, four, three, four weeks ago. Um, and it was specifically for lawyers, specifically to teach them how to use social media to build their brand and to grow their practice. Um, and so, um, uh, John, I'm assuming you're going to send this out so people yeah. can just click on that. We'll, and, we'll and get to here's that. what we'll do. We'll incorporate this into our handouts with a live right. link as well. I do a follow-up email and we'll put this among additional resources. Yeah. Yeah. And, and people so it's can a, click it's, right through to your landing page and sign up if they're interested. Yeah. It's a free webinar. Um, and it's open to any, it's open to anyone, but especially, uh, specific for lawyers, 
Uh, and if you have any questions after, you know, feel free to reach out to me, of course. And and I want to know how many people click through on our follow up email too. Uh -huh. right? <laughs> metrics, metrics, analytics. So uh, excellent, Guy. Thank you so much. And thank you. Um, thank you. You know, we 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 try to keep these opening remarks, you know, fairly contained. People enjoy this next little segment, which is the banter uh, among us. And uh, Uri, I'm going to ask you to take over and be our ringleader. Um, we've got maybe 10 minutes or so. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. I wish we had more to talk mm -hmm. a bit among ourselves. So, sure. Well, uh, yeah, we've got a bunch of questions uh, from the group. Um, I gotta, we'll do some, I'll try and pepper in the longer ones with the shorter ones. Uh, a question that we've gotten all along and continue to get, which is so much of people's business development strategy in 2019 was events, was bar associations. Uh, I think, you know, we asked if you're doing webinars included today. I think if we asked that question in 2019, that number would have been way more down as a part of their strategy. So clearly a lot has changed. What should they be doing now? Meaning we have to recreate business development. So what's changed? Guy, Lynn, John, John, you've also been a marketer for since marketing was invented. So uh, I'll, I'll, I'll say my right. piece at the end. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to rob uh, Guy and Lynn of our precious time remaining. Guy, I'll, please. Well, I'll let Lynn answer first because I'm curious to see what, what she's telling her lawyers to do. Okay. Lynn? Got it. Well, I have a good group in terms of them getting out. So even before the pandemic, I've never worked okay. at a firm or seen a firm where the lawyers uh, speak. They're really good about it. So there are opportunities, of course, how can you be of service? Um, there are opportunities to uh, present just as mm -hmm. we're doing today and to be of service to folks through, through that way. Um, so I think those attending what you can virtually, you have to be strategic about what you attend. Um, continuing to be active in the professional associations and of course in the bar associations. So you want to continue to be seen. I know some folks sit on boards or they're involved in nonprofits. And um, even though we're not all together, um, you know, in the same room like we used to be, there's no question it's 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 much harder. But um, there are still some. Lynn, are your people meeting new people in this environment? Yes, I think through referrals and through connections, you know, we connect right. folks all the time, even outside of the legal sector, if they need help with things. So there are, you know, the referrals that come in and there are folks that you hear from you. There's, this has also been a time I've observed for myself included of reconnection. So mm -hmm. I've connected, connected with people that I haven't talked to in many years. As just a, for instance, I had my first boss from 1991 call me a week ago, no joke. And I hadn't spoken to him and I mean, we keep in touch, but I hadn't spoken to him on the telephone and I don't know, 15 years or so. And wow. he did some help with something and he referred me to someone else and I helped them. And now I've just met another five people. So it's definitely different and it's not uh the same you know it's beautiful to be in in the same room or the same conference with folks but there are still ways to participate and contribute be of service and be out there even though they're not the ways that we've known before that you know we prefer here in new jersey um we're starting to see things reopen and in the past week or so i saw there are a couple events that are actually in person some golf mm -hmm. events so um i know it's different across the country and it might not stay the same, but um, look for opportunities where you can find them. LinkedIn also, I think, is important because a lot of people are on the platform and are paying attention. So um, those are some of the, just off the top of my head, ways that people can still stay connected. Everyone's looking for connection. Lynn, do you work, do you work off a list? And are you very disciplined? I'm going to make two calls a day and reconnect and reach out, or are you doing it more on the fly? I've been doing it more on the fly because it's been coming in so fast and furious. These have been, the cadence to each day is very different. Um, so 
this is different than anything else I can remember, and that it's affected us all dramatically and suddenly across the world. So, I mean, for instance, I've worked remotely before. I I used to work uh, from home two days a week, but now everyone's working remotely. And it's much more difficult to scan something or to send a package or things of that nature. Um, so for me uh, personally, no, I have not worked off of a list. It just happens naturally in the course of the relationships that I have and the work that I do. We do make a, a folks on my team, so my my customers are my lawyers, so I make sure that I, if I haven't heard from someone in a good period of time, a couple of days or something like that, one, either me or someone on my team will reach out and we make sure we, we stay in touch and connected with our lawyers and try and understand how we can support them and what they're doing. And that keeps us pretty busy. Great. So let, let me uh, do two quick things that I think uh, can help in terms of, uh, since you can't meet in person or you know uh, it's somewhat limited um, webinars and podcasts but in a very different way um, you know most people think of webinars as an opportunity to go out there and demonstrate your knowledge and experience and they certainly are that way but I look at webinars also as a great way to build relationships right so if you want to do a web if you have someone that you want to build a relationship with um that you're trying to you know either strengthen or or create a new relationship think about their business and invite them to do a webinar with you where you can showcase their knowledge and experience um and sort of you know refer some of your clients to that person and maybe some of that audience that comes from that person becomes your client so that's a really great way to build relationships but also generate new potential opportunities same thing with podcasts Podcasts are a great opportunity to build relationships, right? So, we, uh, for example, I started the Legal Marketing 2.0 podcast, and part of the reason I started it is there was a bunch of CMOs out there that I wanted to build relationships with. So instead of trying to sell them, I lead with, hey, I'd love for you to be a guest on our podcast. Come aboard, talk about all the great things that you're doing. They love it, right? It's a great way to showcase themselves. And then that relationship flourishes. Uh, so think about it in that way, that it's not just an opportunity for you to demonstrate your knowledge and experience, but also to forge relationships. You know, and Guy, I'm available uh, for, as a guest speaker, you know, in case you, <laughs> you got, got it. something You got up. it. Uh, the invitation <laughs> you know, is right around the corner. I do exactly the things both of you talk about. And, and for me, it's just kind of a natural thing. It's in my DNA. That's not the case for most lawyers. Um, you know, the, the rainmakers, there are naturals out there who just do this very, very easily and they love it. There are others that need a little more structure, a little more encouragement, a little more accountability uh, to do these things. There are some that just will never get it. And, and that's we probably shouldn't be wasting a lot of time with those lawyers. Uh, Lynn, speak to that as an in-house marketer. Some lawyers, you know, just get it. Others never will. And then you got that middle group. Sure. I think that, and that's something that we do all day, every day. So um, as a marketer, it is uh, something I do probably automatically now as a reflex. But as I'm talking mm. to a lawyer that I've not worked with before, I will immediately try and assess what is this person's definition of marketing? And what is, where does this person, how does this person communicate like to me? communicated to and what does this person like to do so some folks aren't the folks who want to, are thriving to go into a cocktail party like you probably would be john um but <laughs> what, are you, what are you saying well i'm saying that you are you've got your charm and, and and you love to know what makes people tick and you're curious and and gregarious like me and anyway some folks you're at either at you know there's a whole continuum so what you want to try and do is provide the support and meet them at their a their level of, of of energy and definition and b keep them in their comfort zone for the most part to try and bring them slowly out of it so it's very um tailored the support that you provide on the business development side is very tailored and folks go at their own pace 
And it's my job to try and keep pace with that, not push too hard, but provide them with the support that they need. So if you're someone who is not going to go out and have um, you know, lunch 12 times in a month, that's okay. But let's talk about what type of work you like, you know, where, where, what kind of law do you like to practice? How would you like your professional development and business development to go? Where do those two things intersect? And usually when you add the passion back in there and the desire, then there's a little bit more willingness to try something that might make you feel uncomfortable for a little while. So, and then of course there's, there, there's people who like to write and there's people who don't like to write. It's about finding the right mix to kind of orchestrate the whole and, and give folks the support that they need uh, that's commensurate with all of those factors. And I think good marketers know this in any industry and they, they do this as a matter of course, but mm -hmm. I agree, you're right. There's a whole along the spectrum and best results are to, as quickly as possible, ascertain what that is and then provide the needed support. And so, yeah, there's some lawyers I work with far more often and frequently than I do others. And there's a whole range of demands. Yeah. You know, I, I, I would add to that, John, um, you know, the, the days of just being a good lawyer and that should be enough are, are long gone. Uh, and especially now, as, as more and more firms struggle uh, with bringing in new business, uh, uh, it's it's almost, you know, the 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 debt, the division between the rainmakers and the doers, it's getting really tough. Um, and being a doer only, you know, just doing the legal work it is very, very difficult. So as a managing partner, you need to make sure you're investing in your lawyers and helping them to learn how to do business development in whatever way, shape or form they feel comfortable with it. But, um, you know, I, I think very few firms are able now to carry lawyers that don't have the ability to bring in business. And, uh, and you know, and, and it starts early, like with associates, teach mm -hmm. them how to do business. They don't teach you that in law school. No, they don't. Um, so they don't. yeah, yep. You know, I'm, I tend to like individual marketing plans, tracking the time, especially to a young lawyer, it might take decades before these relationships start to pay off, you know, but you're investing in your networks and your friendships, all those good things. I wish we had more time, we could go on. Too, John. You know, we, I'm, I'm sorry, Lynn. I said, yeah, we do too. We like individual business plans, team business plans, very important tools for sure. Uh, we could go on for another, we could go on all afternoon. This is a topic near and dear to me as it is to uh, to all of us. And uh, Uri, you with your managing partner summits, you know, we're doing what Guy is suggesting, create a community, a resource and develop friendships and and uh, it, it all comes back. You never know how, where, when, but uh, I think you give to get. And um, you just never know when you're going to get that, quote, payback, uh, you know, it, and, and mm. do the right things for the right reasons over time and good things happen. Um, I just wanted to close with this one because this one's near and dear to me, which is soliciting client feedback. Uh, so one more polling question, and that is, does your law firm, uh, systematically and routinely measure client satisfaction. And uh, Lynn, what do you think? Mm. What do you think? I'm going to say less than 50%. I'm going to say about 48% do. Guy? Uh, yeah. I, I, think, I think people will say yes, but the reality is most are hit or miss. <laughs> Well, you guys were doing so good. Uh, <laughs> All right, you're wrong. You know, this like uh, this is I like consistent. I, I think it's the honest thing, response. This was this the, was the honest, honest response. response. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Good. You know, solicit feedback on an ongoing basis. Here's mm -hmm. why. You know, uh, I think for most commercial law firms, business to business type law firms, the actions with the current clients here are just some of the reasons. Um, you know, John, you're still showing the poll. Oh, I'm sorry. See, that's where I, that's where, Uri, where you were supposed to, you're supposed to be on my butt for that one. Um, but I think the action is with existing clients for these mm -hmm. reasons and more. 
Uh, you said go deep, guy. Now is not the time to go broad. Go deep. Sink into your page one clients and, and show that you care. Um, I was sitting in on a, a presentation by the College of Law Practice Management about marketing in COVID-19 times, and the speaker talked about empathy, being human. And, and showing that emotional intelligence. And that's something that many lawyers just aren't comfortable with. Um, but now more than. I think the uh, Internet just got cut off at John. Uh oh, <laughs> we found a way to make him be quiet. <laughs> here, everybody. Oh, here we go. Oh, there oh, there we go. I love technology. All these platforms, I think, are so overwhelmed right now. Go to webinar and Zoom. Uri, we had questions about Zoom fatigue. We didn't even ch have a chance to get into that. Uh, there's so much we can talk about. Um, we've been flashing this slide up for eight sessions now uh, as a firm leader, you know uh be cool calm collected communicate um demonstrate that care and concern for your people your clients your communities you had that nice little uh, graphic up there lynn mm -hmm. that talked about the bar associations and the chamber of commerce and your alumni association uh those communities that uh, you care about time to step in and and reach out uh, don't go hide our resources uh, hopefully, we'll pull off a conference later this year. Uh, uh, we're still holding, and we'll make a decision in early August. Um, if your firm's looking for webinars, feel free to reach out to any of our faculty. I think Guy would love to do a webinar for your firm on social media. Uh, Lynn, I'm not sure if you're available, but uh, you know, think of us if you are interested in some presentations for your law firm. And you can tell I did a nice job here with my animations. Uh, all of our faculty um, are more than willing to carry on the conversation beyond today's program. Email addresses, uh, telephone numbers, uh, feel free to reach out to any of us. We, we're here to help. Um, and I think we all mean that uh, sincerely and authentically. Uh, so feel free to reach out to any of us. Um, handout materials coming your way. We'll send a link to Guy's webinar as well in the handout. And uh, want to thank Guy and Lynn so much for your Great. time, your participation. You. Uh, been a fun session. The, the time just flies by once we get rolling. And of course, Uri Gutfreund, my partner in legal activities, Ooh, like not that. partner in crime. <laughs> Uri, good to see you. Anything uh, you want to leave us with before we call it a day? People should follow up with their questions that we didn't get to. Uh, I'll put Lynn Uri, on the I'm not spot. hearing you. We hear you. I'll put Lynn on the spot for the last question of the day. How do you do an online wine tasting? Ah. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure. I didn't hear your last comments there, Rory. But uh, everybody, thanks so much. Uh, have a great afternoon. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you in two weeks' time. Thank, Thank you. you.